Good morning and welcome to the webinar on recruiting, hiring, and retaining employees with disabilities. My name is Nathan Sanderson. I'm the Executive Director for the South Dakota Retailers Association. Uh, Retailers Association is a statewide organization of almost 4,000 member businesses and lately we've been focusing a lot on workforce and uh, for some of those workforce uh, ideas that we've been working on, uh, check us out on our website at www.sdra.org. For today's webinar, we've got a presentation by Kimberly Ludwig. Uh, we're really lucky to have her on because she has helped us out in a number of different areas. Kim is a business specialist with the South Dakota Division of Rehabilitation Services. She has a master's degree in rehabilitation counseling and is also a certified rehabilitation counselor. She is the primary contact for South Dakota employers and businesses providing technical support in the areas of hiring people with dis disabilities, which we're going to talk about today, reasonable accommodations, business tax incentives, and other areas of disability-related topics. If you've checked out the latest version of South Dakota Retailer Association's Retail Profit, you've probably seen at least one article uh, that uh, she had a direct hand in producing uh, the business specialist article on service animals. And so we're lucky to have her with us here today. Now, a couple of housekeeping items before I turn it over to Kim. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our website, again, sdra.org. Uh, we've got a couple of other webinars coming up in August. On the 13th, five key strategies to reducing shipping expenses. And then on the 20th of August, advantages and benefits of self-funded health plans. For our webinar today, you'll note on your uh, dialog box, there are three handouts. The first is a slide deck that Kim is going to go through today. The second is a map that shows the local offices that you can contact in order to get assistance for hiring individuals with disabilities. And then uh, the last is uh, the full slide deck. And I should have mentioned the first document is a three slides per page document where you can uh, take notes on that. If you have any questions at all during the dialog, there's a chat box on the side of your screen. Just simply type in your message or your question. We will uh, compile all of those and then I will pose those of Kim at the end of her presentation. So with all of that, prefatory remark or all those prefatory remarks I will turn it over to Kim Ludwig again business specialist with South Dakota Division of Rehabilitation Services thank you Kim for presenting with us this morning and thank you Nathan for the um, introduction and good morning to those that are part of the webinar today um, again on recruiting hiring and retaining employees with disabilities vocational rehabilitation services available to businesses Today's webinar, kind of the primary objective um, is for those of you that are part of the webinar to obtain in-depth knowledge about vocational rehabilitation services and support available to you or your business at no cost. And also acquire a better understanding of best practices or strategies for rec recruiting, hiring, and retaining employees with disabilities. And just as a, um, just wanna note that this presentation presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. It is recommended that you seek a legal counsel for specific matters um, if necessary. Before we delve into um, vocational rehabilitation services and support, I think it's important to um, just define disabilities according to the Americans with Disabilities or the ADA definition, which there are three categories. Um, you know, the ADA defines a person with a disability as a person who has a physical or mental impairment substantially limiting one or major of their life activities. Again, um, some examples of major life activities, it may include limitations of seeing, walking, hearing, breathing, learning, et cetera. It also it can include individuals who have a record or such an impairment, even if they currently do not have a disability. So for example, someone who has a history of cancer, epilepsy or seizures, et cetera. And it can also include an individual who is perceived by others as having such an impairment 
So for example, a parent who has a child with a disability or an individual who has a spouse or a significant other with a disability. It's important to remember that in the context of the ADA, disability is a legal term rather than a medical one. Because it has a legal definition, the ADA's definition of disability is different from how a disability is defined under some other laws, such as, for example, the Social Security Disability Related Benefit. And then lastly, on September 25th, 2008, President signed the Americans with Disabilities Act Amendment of 2008, or known as the ADA Amendments Act. The act emphasizes that the definition of disability should be construed in favor of broad coverage of individuals to the maximum extent permitted by the terms of the ADA and generally shall not require extensive analysis. So what are some examples of disabilities? Can include arthritis, mental health diagnoses such as um, anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder, et cetera, post-traumatic stress disorder, diabetes, traumatic brain injury, cerebral palsy, cognitive or intellectual disabilities, hearing impairment or deafness, vision impairment or blindness, chronic pain or autism spectrum disorder. As you can see from the list above, not all disabilities are visible to the eye, otherwise known as non-visible disabilities. Chances are that you have or have employees with disabilities of whom you are unaware. Again, this may include individuals with non-visible disabilities, veterans, and workers who are older. Furthermore, the reason you may not be aware that employees have disabilities relates to the fact that disclosure of a disability to an employer isn't necessary unless it will affect essential job functions or duties. Moving on to the next slide. Why hire or employ individuals with disabilities? People with disabilities are a growing and highly qualified candidate pool and are employed in public sector agencies, private companies, small businesses, nonprofit organizations, and across all other industries, anywhere from entry level to more advanced positions. It's not about doing the right thing, but it's about the benefits to the business's bottom line. The following are a few benefits of employing individuals with disabilities. First one, increase worker productivity. Many businesses that employ individuals with disabilities report reduced employee turnover, increase employee, increase employee loyalty, and increase morale and productivity of other employees. Second one, diversity. By the middle of this century, over half of the working population will be minorities and people with disabilities already represent the country's largest minority group. This will increase as the working age population develops age-related health conditions and disabilities, otherwise known as acquired disabilities. Increased market share. Individuals with disabilities represent a market for goods and services with 220 billion in discretionary income and 1 trillion in aggregate income. And as more and more individuals with disabilities enter their workforce, their purchasing power will increase. Employees with disabilities can give businesses an inside advantage to an expanded customer base. When deciding how to spend their money, people with disabilities will patronize businesses that are sensitive to, educated about their needs, and know how to accommodate them. Good public relations. Hiring individuals with disabilities can increase a company's brand image with consumers. And last one, the win-win strategy. Making a difference in the lives of people with disabilities encourages a culture of caring and respect for diversity 
in the employer and a positive consumer response. This table displayed in the slide pertains to the employment rate of people with disabilities compared to those with disabilities, which contains data for both South Dakota and nationally. The data is obtained from the annual disability statistics compendium and the table contains historical information on the employment gap between people without disabilities versus those with disabilities. So for example, in the report year to 2018, which actually identifies um, data from 2017, 82.5% 82 of people without disabilities were employed in South Dakota compared to 51.3% of those with disabilities, resulting in an employment gap of 31.2%. However, the employment gap in South Dakota is not as substantial as the national employment gap of 40.2% during 2017. This is another example that people with disabilities are an untapped labor pool. And then I just wanna note that the South Dakota rank, the last um, column there that just identifies where South Dakota ranks um, compared to other states. So we are the, actually the second highest state in 2017 to, for the employment rate or with the highest employment rate for people with disabilities. Did you know? Title I of the ADA prohibits private employers, state and local governments, employment agencies, and labor unions from discriminating against qualified individuals with disabilities in job application procedures, hiring, firing, advancement, compensation, job training, and other terms, conditions, and privileges of employment. It also applies to employment agencies and to labor organizations. So, According to federal ADA regulations, the employment provision or Title I of the ADA applies to businesses of 15 or more employees. However, in South Dakota, the employment provisions pertain to all businesses. The South Dakota Human Relations Act prohibits employment practices discriminating on the basis of disability. And that's the specific law that pertains to that. There's also a separate state law prohibiting employers from discriminating against applicants or employees on the basis of genetic information. Both laws cover all public and private employers, regardless of size. So now getting into what is vocational rehabilitation. Every state has a state vocational rehabilitation agency that is designed to help individuals with disabilities who encounter barriers to employment meet their employment goals. VR also partners with businesses or employers by offering workplace assistance and solutions when recruiting, hiring, or retaining employees with disabilities. The philosophy of VR's partnership with businesses places emphasis on their workforce or employee needs, such as what workforce challenges is your company encountering and how can VR assist in addressing them? South Dakota has two VR agencies available. They're both, um, one is called the South Dakota Division of Rehabilitation Services and um, Division of Rehabilitation Services or DRS for short provides individualized employment related services to employees with a variety of disabilities, resulting in barriers to employment as they're preparing for obtaining or retaining employment. The South Dakota Division of Service to the Blind and Visually Impaired or SCVI for short, provides individualized rehabilitation services resulting in employment and independent living outcomes for individuals who are blind or visually impaired. Essentially, DRS and SBVI are partner agencies. 
this map um, identifies that VR is located throughout the entire state and there are a total of 12 offices um, available in the state. So 11, them, 11 of them are local offices and the central, and there is a central office in Pierre. The map provides information on office locations, the counties that are covered by the different offices and their contact information. So for example, the Aberdeen area office um, is color coded. So for those areas that, same, that are color coded with that office is that the um, counties that are served by the Aberdeen office. Benefits to businesses partnering with VR. A partnership with a VR agency can meet the following business needs. Access to a new talent pool of qualified candidates for employment. Access to a team of employment specialists and VR counselors with knowledge and expertise regarding the employment needs of individuals with disabilities. Guidance and consultation regarding the ADA accommodations and accessibility. Disability awareness training. Consultation regarding Section 503 compliance and tax incentives. To elaborate on what is Section 503, it prohibits federal contractors and subcontractors from discriminating in employment against individuals with disabilities, and they must also take affirmative action to recruit, hire, and promote qualified employees with disabilities. Federal contractors are individuals or employers who enter into a contract with the U.S., any department or agency, to perform a specific job, supply, labor, and materials, or for the sale of products and services. A federal subcontractor is a company that does business with another company holding direct contacts with the federal government. One of the primary highlights of Section 503 establishes a nationwide 7% utilization goal for qualified individuals with disabilities. Contractors apply the goal to each of their job groups or to their entire workforce if the contractor has 100 or fewer employees. Contractors must conduct an annual utilization analysis and assessment of problem areas and establish specific action-oriented program to address any identified problem. Going on to the list, the creation and funding of a broad range of work experiences, including on the job training and internships, and also offering opportunities for collaboration with community colleges, community rehabilitation programs, or other organizations responsive to the workforce needs of businesses. This next slide, I just want to provide a, a basic overview of the VR um, process. So an individual with a, or job seeker with a disability it must meet eligibility requirements. And the eligibility requirements consist of must have a documented disability. His or her disability prevents them from effectively obtaining or maintaining employment and require services for employment purposes. The VR counselor provides individual and or group counseling to help individuals adjust to their disability. Also evaluate individuals' abilities, interests, experiences, skills, health, and education for employment purposes. And then moving on to the service provider or employment specialist. Can be contracted with to assist a job seeker who is eligible for VR services, prepare for, obtain, and or maintain employment. VR contracts with private for profit individuals and community support providers to work with job seekers on employment related services authorized by VR. So, kind of elaborating on providers, a provider may assist. assist a job seeker by collaborating with businesses, filling out job applications, 
preparing for interviews and depending on the job seeker's needs, may assist him or her to learn the essential job functions after obtaining employment. So once job seekers achieve employment, typically VR will provide individualized support to them and their employers during the first three months of employment. Additionally, VR services are time limited. So some best practices for recruiting job seekers with disabilities. Today, many factors are prompting businesses or employers to recognize the importance of incorporating disability into their talent management strategies. But while many employers understand the value of disability inclusive workplace culture, they may not know how to effectively recruit and retain people with disabilities or have the capacity to take proactive steps to do so. So the following strategies are a few examples of best practices businesses can consider to recruit job seekers with disabilities. So the first one on the list is establishing internal policies prioritizing the hiring of people with disabilities. Ensuring that the hiring of people with disabilities is part of the company's overall hiring plan. Conducting targeted outreach to attract qualified candidates with disabilities. Developing community linkages. So as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, um, businesses forming partnerships with VR is one example of developing community linkages. Retaining and reviewing applications from applicants with disabilities when future openings occur and ensuring fully accessible online job applications and electronic and social media recruitment materials. Where can I find talent with disabilities? Companies have expressed concern that one of the greatest barriers they face to advancing disability inclusion is the inability to find qualified candidates. The key is effective outreach and recruitment. To effectively build a pipeline of applicants with disabilities, your company can develop relationships with a variety of recruitment sources. And I have, as I mentioned earlier, developing a partnership with VR. So how can VR assist with your business with recruiting job seekers with disabilities? On-site informational meetings and tours creates opportunities for both VR and your business to meet and have conversations to learn more about one another and for VR to acquire information about your workplace, job openings, and other relevant information to better inform and prepare individuals that may be potentially interested in applying or pursuing employment with your company. You can also assist with sharing or um, sending job openings to within VR. So how that works is your company has the option of sending job openings directly to me or to the local VR office that is available in your community, which will then be distributed to job seekers that may be interested or qualified for the job. Best practices for equal access for applicants with disability. Ensure that job announcements posted on job boards or social media um, or networking sites are in formats that are accessible to job seekers with disabilities. Indicate on job announcements that qualified individuals with disabilities are encouraged to apply and that reasonable accommodations will be provided or ensure the online application system, including online pre-employment tests are accessible to candidates with disabilities, or confirm that interview locations are physically accessible. So to elaborate on this, um, inform all applicants ahead of time what the interview process may include and provide them with the opportunity to request a reasonable accommodation if necessary. Be prepared to provide reasonable accommodations for applications, 
interviews, pre-employment tests, and other aspects of the hiring process when needed, including assigning staff to arrange and approve requested accommodations in a timely fashion. So interviews. What can an interviewer ask about a person's disability during the hiring process? What questions may not be asked? Generally speaking, the ADA does not allow for an employer to ask any questions about a disability or to conduct any necessary examinations until after the employer makes a conditional job offer to the applicant. Although employers may not ask disability-related questions or require medical examinations at the pre-offer stage, they may do a wide variety of things to evaluate whether an applicant is qualified for the job, including the following. Employers may ask about the applicant's ability to perform specific job functions or tasks. Employers may request that an applicant describe or demonstrate how they would perform job tasks or achieve employment outcomes. Employers may also ask about the applicant's qualification of skills, such as applicant education, work history, and required certification and licenses. So on the slides, here's an example of an appropriate interview question that can be asked. Can you perform all the required job functions, tasks, and or duties listed here with or without accommodation. And in the parentheses there, especially where the question says duties listed here, just provide a detailed list of the job functions. Um, that would be the job description. If the applicant responds that he or she can perform the task with an accommodation, you may then ask, how would you perform the task and with what accommodations. So moving on to VR services available to businesses. Disability awareness and etiquette training. This is training that can be conducted on site at your place of business to provide education about best practices to effectively interact with different types of disabilities for an employee and or customer purposes. On the job training, if you directly train a new employee with a disability who is eligible for VR services and he or she doesn't have any prior skills for the position that, she's, that he or she is hired for, VR can consider reimbursing your company for half of the wages for the affiliated um, training for up to three months. Employment support services, which may consist of job coaching and or follow along services. So to elaborate on job coaching services, it's available to provide time limited assistance and support to an employee with a disability who may benefit from one-on-one -on -one training to learn the essential job functions as he or she begins working. How does this process work? Early in the presentation, I address the availability of employment specialists or providers. And through this service, they can work with you first to learn the essential job functions and then beginning, begin working one-on-one -on -one with the employee. This is really valuable, especially for small or other businesses that don't have the time to individually train a new employee with a disability to learn his or her job duties. And VR can provide job coaching services for an employment specialist to come on site to assist with training the new employee. Moving on to follow along services provided to an employee and employer for monitoring reasons upon him or her starting with the position to ensure things are going well and provide assistance if any questions or concerns come up. Situational assessments or short-term short internship opportunities. This service can be valuable for both job seekers and businesses or employers who have them try a position on site to ensure all qualifications can be met 
and potential employers can also see firsthand if individuals may become potential employees. BR provides insurance coverage for job seekers while they're involved in the situational assessment or sh short-term internship opportunities. Assistive technology evaluations and or devices can be referred to as um, reasonable or workplace accommodation. An assistive technology device is any item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether acquired, commercially, off the shelf, modified, or customized, that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capacities of individuals with disabilities. It can also help people learn, compete in the work environment, achieve independence, or improve the quality of life. The use of assistive technology is not an end in itself but is part of an ongoing therapeutic process to improve functional capabilities. Devices can replace a missing limb, help prevent the worsening of a condition, help improve physical functioning, help improve a person's capacity to learn or strengthen a physical or other um, functional limitation. So how does the assistive technology help people at work? Workplace accommodations help an individual that may utilize a wheelchair to access the necessary equipment ar around the workplace, such as bookshelves, computers, or work tables. Another example is a headset, phones, or telephone amplifiers may assist a person with a disability, especially a hearing loss, to answer the phone. A motorized lift may assist farmers with disabilities to get into a tractor. Tape players and headphones may also be utilized as a workplace accommodation to drown out noises, especially for an individual um, that's with attention deficit disorder. There may be circumstances where certain workplace accommodations require the assistive technology devices, which will require an on-site assistive technology evaluation beforehand in which there is a company that is available here in South Dakota called Dakota Link that specializes in assistive technology and BR works very closely with them. Project skills. Oftentimes students with disabilities don't get an opportunity to explore their career interests while in high school. Although willing, most employers can't afford to provide the training and support students may, re may frequently require on their first job. So Project Skills is actually a um, paid work experience program that's available for high school students with disabilities that are eligible for VR services. The program is a cooperative arrangement between the state VR agencies and the local school districts within South Dakota. So how does the Project Skills program work? The student identifies jobs they're interested in. The school representative contacts businesses to identify possible jobs matching the student's career interests. Once the work experience site is identified, there is some work paperwork that needs to be completed with the student, school district, and VR. The maximum number of hours a student can work at your business is 250 hours per year through this program. VR provides assistance with funding the hourly wages at the current minimum wage rate, workers' compensation, and the FICA deductions taken out of the paycheck, while the school provides assistance to students and businesses with, job, with the job development and on the job support during the duration of the work experience. So on the job support, that would be in reference to, for example, the job coaching or the employment follow-along services that I talked about a couple minutes ago. Top benefits to your business in being involved in project skills, access to an untapped labor pool, potential of finding good employees for your business, be able to provide training and work experience for students within your community, gain knowledge about services provided to individuals with disabilities, and additionally, VR also has a similar work experience 
program that's available for adults with disabilities, which is called the Employment Skills Program, and is beneficial when there may be gaps in employment history due to disability-related reasons. The process for this program is very similar to the Project Skills Program. Vocational Rehabilitation Business Specialist in the capacity that I do. Um, so essentially, the, my role is to serve as a single point of contact at the state level for businesses to provide any technical assistance and support when recruiting, hiring, retaining, or advancing employees with disabilities. It can also provide one-on-one -on -one or group support assistance. Having a designated point of contact for businesses creates opportunities for them to know who to contact directly for any disability-related questions or technical assistance for their workplaces. The assistance and support that are provided to businesses are customized to their needs Etc. However, if you wish to directly work with the local VR office that's located in your community, that is an option as well. What I would like to do is just kind of cover some common questions or concerns that businesses may have. First question, some of my employees without disabilities are uncomfortable with our employees who do have disabilities. How can this be addressed in the workplace? It's one option. I can be a support to businesses to provide information or training on aspects of disability in the workplace, which includes the disability etiquette and awareness training. Second question. I have a, an, an employee that I think has a disability, but he or she hasn't approached me about it. Do I just ignore it? Or is there something that I should be doing? As long as the, suspect, the suspected disability is not interfering with employee's performance or workplace behavior, then don't single out the employee. Focus on creating a culture of trust and inclusion where all employees feel comfortable so they feel safe in disclosing the information if they feel the need. People with disabilities, like all other employees, vary in their level of openness about aspects of their non-work life. Again, if there's no impact on the job, just simply respect the employee's right to privacy. Here may be a common scenario or question. I have a small business and most of my employees have been with me for several years. One employee in particular is having trouble with their vision. I don't wanna hurt their feelings and single them out I worry about their productivity and speed. I hate to just give them a bad performance review until I'm forced to fire him or her. Am I allowed to talk about what I think is a disability or am I limited to only talking about their declining performance? Anytime there's a change in behavior or performance, don't wait until the annual performance review to address the issue. As a best practice, provide regular feedback to employees on their performance. Meet with the employee using the advice of your human resource representative if your business has one that is available. And discuss the change in their productivity and speed. Ask them to explain why this may be happening. The answer may not be due to a vision problem. There may be another explanation for the change, which is another good reason to hold the discussion. Let them know that you are having this conversation because you want to see what can be done to correct the situation. Also, let them know that you are there to problem solve together. Also, be clear that your goal is preventing a future poor performance review since their longevity with the business is highly valued. If the issue is a result of the employee's declining vision, this is where the Division of Service to the Blind and Vision Impaired, or SBVI, can be helpful to both you and the employee in providing necessary services or support. Some additional questions. This slide really pertains to service animals, which um, is a very hot topic within um, the business industry. 
as Nathan mentioned earlier. So what are service animals? The true definition of a service animal are defined as dogs and as modifications, miniature horses that are individually trained to do work or perform tasks for people with disabilities. Examples of such work or tasks include assisting or guiding people who are blind, alerting people who are deaf, pulling a wheelchair, alerting and protecting a person who is having a seizure or reminding a person with mental illness or mental health condition to take prescribed medication, calming a person with post-traumatic post -traumatic stress disorder during an anxiety attack, or performing other duties. Moving on to the second question. If I have customers bring animals into my place of business, what can I do to verify that it's truly a service animal? There are two questions that can be asked. Is the dog a service animal required because of a disability? The second question that can be asked, what work or task has the dog been trained to perform? Those are the only two questions that can be asked to verify whether or not the service animal or dog or this modification, a miniature horse, that can be asked. Staff cannot ask about the person's disability, require medical documentation, or require special identification card or training documentation for the dog. And, um, can, and they cannot be asked for the dog to demonstrate its ability to perform the work or task. Allergies and fear of dogs are not valid reasons for denying access or refusing service to people using service animals. A person with a disability cannot be asked to remove his or her service animal from the premises unless the dog is out of control and the handler does not take effective action to control it or the dog is not housebroken. So the third and last question on the slide, do you, the same rules apply to a customer bringing their service animal into a store also govern a service animal accompanying an employee to their job? Absolutely not. A service animal accompanying an employee to his or her job is viewed as a reasonable accommodation under Title I or the employment provisions of the ADA, which governs employment. Thus, an employee must request that the service animal be pre present as an accommodation for their disability. The employer is obligated to take such requests seriously. The employee may request and the business or employer may allow as an accommodation an animal that does not meet the ADA definition of service animal. For example, the employee could request that their comfort animal, which does not meet the ADA definition of a service animal, be allowed to come to work as an accommodation. You may have heard about Stability for Hire. This is an initiative of the South Dakota Vocational Rehabilitation Program, and it's designed to deliver information and resources to employer and businesses for recruiting, hiring, or retaining employees with disabilities. There's a website that's available at www.abilityforhire.com, or you can like our page on Facebook, and that is the link um, if you search Ability for Hire uh, as well. Um, you can find it that way on Facebook. So with that, I would like to turn it over to questions if there are any now. Thanks, Kim. Yes, we have several questions. And I think for a number of these, you've, you've touched on parts of them. Um, but I think there are some pretty specific questions in here. And I, I think it's a pretty good one. So I'll start uh, with our first question and it's this. I understand that there may be tax incentives available for businesses that employ people with disabilities. Where can I get more information about that? Yes, there. Um, if you are interested in learning more about those tax incentives, there are actually three tax incentives available. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, please reach out to me and we can individually work on them. But the three tax incentives are the work opportunity tax credit, um, 
includes the disabled access credit, which is available for small businesses, and that um, there's certain eligibility requirements for businesses to pursue that, but that's really beneficial for workplace or reasonable accommodations. And the other one is available for any type of business, um, and that is called the architectural and transportation barrier removal tax deduction, um, and that kind of makes those modifications to existing facilities and so forth. But if you're interested in learning more about those, please reach out to me. Okay, thank you. And uh, just quickly, her contact information is 605-626-2330. Uh, That's her phone number again, 605-626-2326. And then her email address is kimberly.ludwig at state.sd.us. Kimberly.ludwig at state.sd.us. Uh, yeah, thanks. thanks, Nathan. And I just pulled up the slide, um, the perfect. last slide of the there's my contact information. The phone number that Nathan provided you with is my direct line. Otherwise, the phone number that's featured on this slide is the primary um, number. I am based out of Aberdeen, but I do provide assistance throughout the entire state. Very good. All right, next question. I would like to give my employees some information about working with coworkers who have disabilities and working with customers who have disabilities. Where are there information, uh, informational materials available that I can share? I can provide you um, with some information or I can actually come on site and provide training or there's always an option um, of doing like an online um, training as well if necessary. Um, but please feel free to reach out to me to, for more of those individualized um, information that you may require. Okay, very good. And again, our contact information is on the screen. All right, um, you touched on this a little bit, I think, but it, there's a, a bit of a different angle here. And the question is, if an employee with a disability asks for an accommodation, but I can't afford it, Am I required to make that specific accommodation or can I suggest an alternative that is more affordable? You know, that is very comprehensive and that's an ex excellent question. Um, you know, to better answer that question, provide guidance, um, take into account um, kind of the individual circumstances and what, their, what his or her disability is and what the required job functions are for that particular position. And so it'd be having that conversation, um, you know, I'd be more than happy to provide the basic guidance for that. But there's also, I can provide um, assistance with referring you to um, a free national resource called the Job Accommodation Network. And it's confidential, it's free, but they will actually guide you through that particular process. Um, so excellent question. Okay, very good. And uh, before I get to the next question, I would mention that uh, the South Dakota Retailers Association has a human resources attorney available to all of our members uh, for free for human resources related questions. And Kim is not able to provide legal advice, but Chris Hoime with Jackson Lewis, our uh, on-call attorney, can. And so I would certainly encourage our members to take advantage of that service. Again, it's it's completely free to members, and so don't hesitate to contact Chris Hoyme, and his information is on our website as well. So with that preface, here is the question. I'm going to be interviewing a person who I know has a disability. I'm not sure when and how to ask about specific accommodations that they might need. And you had touched on this next piece a little bit. Is it up to that job applicant to bring it up, or should I ask directly what specific accommodations that they need? And again, is this something that I can address during the job interview, or do I need to wait until after the person has been hired for the job? Yeah, as you know, essentially, as I covered in earlier in the presentation, um, Technically, the applicant, interviewee, um, or employee um, doesn't have to disclose a disability 
unless it affects their, you know, potential or and or its job functions, central job functions. Um, I think kind of a, a a good baseline. And again, you know, feel free to I highly encourage you to seek the legal um, consultation. But as a general kind of basic guideline, uh, go back to the slide um, on the interviewee or the interview, um, which was slide um, fifteen is kind of a general baseline. Um, but then also on the prior slide before that, where I talked about interview locations, um, where inform all applicants ahead of time of what the interview process may include and provide them with the opportunity to request a reasonable accommodation if necessary. I would apply that to every applicant that is being scheduled for um, interview. So kind of just talk about um, what the interview setting is going to be like um, and provide any of that information as necessary. So hopefully that answers the question. If not, feel free to reach out to me. Okay, very good. And uh, I mentioned uh, to our members to not be afraid to contact Chris Hoyme again with those uh, kinds of questions as well, because there may be some very specific circumstances that uh, would be best handled by an attorney. Uh, final question that we've got here for you, Kim, is can you explain just a little bit more about the short-term internship program? How do you match up an employer with an employee? Is there assistance with training? How long does the internship last? Uh, is it for students or adults? Those kinds of things. Yeah, well, it's, you know, first and foremost, um, when we're matching the kind of the potential work sites, we take into account um, you know, age requirements, you know, we abide by the, um, the Department of Labor's uh, fair labor laws, um, but, you know, ensure that the minimum age qualifications can be met. But for the particular, like, situational assessment or short-term internship, um, how that takes place is, is there's the individual that is receiving service from VR, you know, if it's kind of questionable, you know, or um, if he or she has the skills abilities to perform or be qualified for the position that they're interested in in a particular company, um, then what will take place is either the VR counselor or an employment specialist or provider will contact or collaborate with the business um, to identify if so there's an opportunity um, for this service to our agency. Um, would you be willing to have the potential qualified individual or job seeker come on site to your business and try the job? It could be maybe a day for two hours or even two weeks. It, it truly depends on um, the hours availability, um, but just be able to try the job, see if it's going to work out. And, but then also the uh, VR counselor or employment specialist or provider will be there on site during that time as well to, for some observation purposes as well. Okay, very good. And so that's probably, again, one of those areas where if there are specific questions, they could probably uh, reach out to you and see uh, just what types of uh, options might be available for each individual business. Yep, that is absolutely correct. Very good, very good. And again, well, again yep, there's a contact, contact information. information. All right, well, that uh, those are all of the questions that we have. Um, would certainly uh, like to thank Kim for her time this afternoon. Uh, again, this, or this morning, I guess, this webinar was recorded and is available, again, on the SDRA website, sdra.org. Um, 
for businesses that are seeking alternative work for, workforce uh, strategies, this might be something that uh, you can take a look at. Uh, there are, again, two upcoming webinars that we have scheduled on the 13th of October, five key strategies to reduce shipping expenses. On the 20th of August, advantages and benefits of self-funded health plans. Thanks again to Kim Ludwig uh, with the State of South Dakota and the Division of Rehabilitation Services. And that wraps up our webinar for this morning. Thanks to everyone and have a great day.